Good morning. We're in 2 Samuel chapter 4 today. As a brief review of what happened prior to the events recorded in this chapter, let me share this. Saul, the first king of Israel, is dead. God's next king, David, has been anointed as king over his own tribe of Judah. The general of Saul's army, Abner, was still seeking to maintain his position of power. So, instead of acknowledging David as king over all of Israel, Abner, through his power with the military, installed one of Saul's surviving sons, Isbosheth, as king of Israel. Sometime afterwards, Isbosheth and Abner's relationship soured, and a bitter Abner went to David to offer support to place David as king over all of Israel. Subsequently, David's main general, Joab, whose brother had been killed by Abner, murdered Abner in cold blood, much to David's dismay. So we join the ongoing story here in 2 Samuel chapter 4. Verses 1 through 2 say this, When Isbosheth, Saul's son, heard that Abner had died at Hebron, his courage failed, and all of Israel was dismayed. Now Saul's son had two men who were captains of raiding bands. The name of one was Bana, and the other was named Rechab, sons of Rimon, a man of Benjamin, the tribe of Saul from Baroth. It is the action of these two men in this chapter to which I want to give attention. In summary, Bana and Rechab decided that they would seek to move into the power role Abner had held before his death, and they would do that by killing Isbosheth, thus clearing an obstacle of Saul's family in the line of, of reigning uh, and allowing David to be king over all of Israel. Essentially, they went to the residence of Isbosheth and murdered him while he was taking his afternoon nap. They then beheaded him and took the head to David to show him what a wonderful thing they had done. David did not see it that way, and as king, sentenced them to execution for their deed of killing an innocent man. David knew he had been appointed as king in place of Saul, but as we have read, starting in 1 Samuel chapter 16 through the chapter that we're in today, David was more than patient in waiting for God's timing to become king. He had had various opportunities to kill Saul himself, even as Saul was trying to destroy David. Yet he waited for God's time. You know, waiting is not something that most of us do very well. The example of Bana and Rechab reminds us that we must be careful not to try to get ahead of God. They apparently thought they could assist in seeing God's ultimate will be done, but without God's leading to take the action that they took against Isbosheth. They perceived the end justified the means. They were wrong. Judas Iscariot was guilty of essentially the same sin as he betrayed Jesus with the supposed hope of forcing Jesus to become the military political leader Judas believed God's Messiah would be. We need to always check our hearts and our motives as we speak or act about God's will. One writer I read in studying this passage stated the following as it relates to possible applications to us from this passage. We can be harsh and then use something about God's truth as a cover for our severity. We can be indifferent and then use something about God's holiness to co as a cover for our separation from a needy sinner. We can rationalize and use something about God's grace as a cover for our impurity. All of God's word is a revelation of who he is as well as revealing who we are. Even a story such as described in 2 Samuel chapter 4 is there to help us to be more like Jesus. God bless.